Do I look into the camera or, or look at you? Oh, okay. Okay, Anya Dunnigan, 3 under 69. And here it is, your first professional major, and you have an eagle early on in the round. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I started off a little bit nervy. Um, I was actually doing well to be two over through four holes. I uh, made two good up and downs uh, on my third and fourth hole, and then, um, you know, I hit a driver down 15, and I had about 96 to the pin, and my coach said, just play it a little bit right at the pin. It all kind of feeds down, and it's an easier putt up the hill then. Um, and I hit this shot, and I knew it was going to be good. Um, and then it bounces, bounces, and kind of spins back, and it just drops in. And I've my family here, and a few other Irish uh, over here who are in who are in the United who live in the United States, and a uh, big scream from all the Irish people. And uh, yeah, it was kind of just one of those things that then I'm back to even, and we just start again, really. And you know that kind of made me a bit more comfortable. And um, no, I was really, really pleased with it. And then you also picked up a birdie on the iconic 17th hole. I don't know how much history you know about that hole, but to birdie there is pretty special. Yeah, it was a little against the wind. Um, and I knew I had about 172, I think it was, to carry the bunker. Um, so I just said to my my, co my coach and my caddy, um, I said, oh, I'll, I'll hit four iron. And I hit, couldn't have hit it better, uh, just right of the pin. And then it all, we actually thought at one stage it might go in as well. Um, but I hit it to about two feet and just uh, tap that in for a birdie so that was nice then to kind of you close out my front nine um, under par and then uh, when you made the turn you got on a run there where you birdied three holes in a row tell us about that yeah um, so I, I bogeyed uh, the first hole the my tenth hole um, missed a short enough five foot putt and my coach just said just regroup you know we've par five coming up um, and I made about a 15 footer down the hill for birdie there and then the third hole here um, has since the first time I played it it's, I kind of like it it kind of suits my eye um, so I kind of smashed my driver down over the tree on the left and, and it ended up in the fairway and I only had about 110 to the flag then and made another about a 15 footer and then um, after that the short I, uh, it's actually funny because I'm the three holes that I birdied in a row, I had the exact same yardage to the flag on all three, pretty much within one or two yards. Um, so I said that to my, my caddy after I goes, well, that's my new favorite yardage. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the three in a row, and then I was really comfortable and I had a good feeling where my ball was gonna go all day, which is a great feeling to have. It's not one you get a lot in golf. Um, and honestly, the hole out helped because it made me very comfortable and um, you know, it's, at the end of the day, this is just another tournament. You know, it's on an iconic place. And that's my main thing was to come out here and enjoy it. And luckily for me today, everything seemed to fall, fall the right way. Where would you rank this round in all the golf that you've played so far in your life? Uh, definitely the top. No doubt about it, you know. Especially, I mean, it wouldn't be the first, let's just say it wouldn't be the first time I've started bogey bogey. But um, for me to come back then and finish how I finished and play the rest of the round how I finished. Um, I'm really proud of myself for that and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. Well, let's open up the questions. And we have a, a young junior reporter has one question for you. Hi, I've been here for the past few days and I've seen everyone having so much fun. As things get more serious, how will you plan to continue to have fun and focus on playing your best? That's a great question. Um, just enjoy it, you know, look at the view, look at all the people out here watching sport and women's golf and um, for such a big tournament to be played at such a, a big place, um, it's, it would be difficult not to enjoy it out here. You know, it's important not to take things too seriously around here. Um, and luckily for me, I didn't today. And, you know, it kind of goes the right way when you're making sure you enjoy it and you're having fun at the same time. Thank you. Kent? I know you had some club issues coming into the week. Could you walk through what happened with that and how you ended up getting replacements? Yeah, so I had a team event last week in Scotland um, for Great Britain and Ireland. Um, so I flew from Scotland um, on Sunday morning at about 4 a.m. from Scotland to Dublin and then Dublin to Newark and then Newark to San Francisco. And when I arrived in San Francisco, the clubs, clubs hadn't arrived. Um, and we were traveling about at least 30 hours by then. Um, so 
they told us at the airport, you know, they're going to come the next day, and they, they didn't end up coming, so I sent a tweet out, and it kind of got made a few headlines. Um, and then eventually they arrived, but I had to play my first practice round with no clo- with the ping, ping club. Scott from ping helped me out. Um, so full ping set, and I play ping irons, um, so that helped anyways. And I that particular practice round, I started to hit the driver really well, and I said it to my caddy who's also my coach Gary I said I might change to this driver for the week um and he said you know we're gonna have a bit of a dilemma when your clubs do arrive so anyways the clubs arrive the next day I think on Tuesday and my driver is smashed completely smashed um and at least it stopped us you know thinking oh which driver will we use we had we only had one choice then and um, so I put that in, and honestly, I'm delighted I did. It's like everything happens for a reason, you know, that the, the clubs were late, and then the driver came, and it was broken, and all of a sudden now I have no choice but to put this ping driver in, and um, I added the, the new three-wood and the hybrid as well, and for, fortunately for me, they were the perfect fit, um, and, you know, out here you need to drive the ball well. You need to hit the fairway. The rough is really thick, so if you're not if you're not hitting the fairways, you're going to be struggling, and luckily for me, it all worked out, so. How did going through that episode before your first start at a professional tournament maybe add to the nerves you were facing throughout the week? Um, it was a little bit frustrating, but Gary, my, my coach, and my caddy said, this is just, don't let this be another distraction. At the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. And there wasn't. There was nothing I could have done about it. Um, so there's no point stressing about it because um, it's not going to change anything. Um, so that was kind of how we looked at it. And, you know, I think it's the right way to look at it because there was nothing we could do about it. The clubs were late. They weren't going to be there. And then the driver was broken. And, like, we couldn't change it. So there was just nothing else. That, there's no point worrying about something that you've no control over. In your very similar position to your teammate Ingrid Lindblad from yeah. last year, did you talk to her at all ahead of this week for any advice playing the U.S. Women's Open? Uh, I did, yeah. Um, I kind of just asked her how things work, how many tickets we get and all this. <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, uh, I'd love for Ingrid to have been here as well, you know. She's just gone world number one. But, um, no, yeah, I'm delighted, you know, go Tigers and all that. <laughs> um, Anya, could you just talk about how it is taking everything in in your first pro event, let alone a major? Your coach was kind of saying you've been a little starstruck here and there, seeing some of your favorite players you've watched growing up. Yeah, um, the whole thing's been a bit surreal, to be honest. It's all, nearly every five minutes, I, it's like a pinch me moment. Um, even like just walking to the putting green and, you know, young girls asking for autographs and stuff. And it's like, that was me. Um, and to do it at a place like Pebble Beach is you know something I'll never forget and on um, Tuesday we played uh, I played 18 holes at Annika and honestly it's one of the best days of my life you know she you can learn a lot from her and she knows she, at the end of the day she's the icon of the game the goat of the game um, and um, that was really like even just to play 18 holes at Annika and then at the US in a practice round for the US Women's Open at Pebble Beach is just the whole thing has kind of been like a pinch me moment um, and I can't thank, you know, my coach Gary enough, my college coaches Alexis and Garrett, my parents. You know, I wouldn't be here without a lot of them. Um, my teammates at LSU, I hope they're watching. Um, and yeah, all the people who've helped me get here, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. Is there anything that Annika said to you during that practice round that stuck with you? Um, yeah, actually, this one really stuck me. I asked her on one of the holes, I said, how many US Opens have you won? And she said, uh, three. And I goes to her husband, oh, very casually, very casual, just three, you know. That would be the one thing, you know, she's so down to earth. Um, one of the most down to earth people and, um, you know, just her way of even just speaking to people. And, you know, she was just as nice to me as she was to my parents, as she is to probably every other professional on the tour. You know, it's like nobody's above anybody else. And, you know, just that, even just how she socializes with people, I learned a lot from. You talked about uh, having so much support. How much does that mean to you to have that out here today, to have your coaches and family out here? Yeah, uh, incredible, you know. Um, And the crowd kind of kept getting bigger as I kept going. Um, But even just when I when I held out, there's a huge cheer, you know. And there wasn't there wasn't that many of uh, of my fans, my family and friends here. Um, And then you know I was walking onto the seventh. 
um, my third last hole and so all I hear is oh well done Anya and then I look over and guys wearing big Irish jersey you know obviously there's a lot of Irish in San Francisco and um, a lot of them came out today and I'd be hoping to see a lot more tomorrow because it does help it really does help and you know it kind of um, the cheers kind of just spur you on a little bit and um, no it's great there any feeling of like playing back home in Ireland, playing out here with the layout of Pebble? Yeah, um, it is. It's a little kind. Of, it's a little bit like Lynx. It's not exactly like it, but just in terms of even wind. Like I loved playing the wind. I'd actually like if the wind would pick up a little bit. Um, like the qualifier I played to get into this, it was extremely windy, um, and I kind of I tend to play better in the wind. Um, yeah, it's a little bit like it in terms of as well, it's distance and for example, on the seventh hole today, it was about 110 and it was kind of against the wind and you kind of had to fly, fly it down, um, which I think is, is a great thing for me that I'm able to do that um, in the wind. And I, I've heard it's gonna be, the wind is gonna pick up again throughout the week. So um, in that sense, like growing up in Ireland and playing courses in Ireland uh, has really helped. Was there any conversation you had after your bogey bogey start to, to settle into the day? Not really, to be honest. Just keep, just keep plodding away, you know. Um, the second hole, the first hole, it just missed a short putt, and then the second hole, if I was a yard further, it would have been really close, and it just went into the bunker. So um, I made two really good up and downs on my third and fourth hole, which kind of made me a bit more comfortable, and then to, to hole out was kind of you know kind of made me really enjoy it then after that because I was a little bit kind of scared I was going to hit uh, go high really high there after my start but you know I, it wouldn't be the first time I've gone bogey bogey and it won't be the last uh, to start so last question uh, what did you know about Pebble Beach before you came here and what was your greatest challenge out there today um I've been here before just uh I was in the kind of San Francisco area and I came down um, with one of my friends from back home and her uncle and um, we, we went for lunch here and stuff but it was kind of dark at Pebble but just even walking around when it was dark was amazing and I, I got a woolly hat from the uh, shop at Pebble Beach that was nearly two and a half years ago now and um, I mean you can everyone knows what Pebble Beach is like you play it on simulators all the time you see so many iconic shots from um, the pros uh, out here and um, that's what my thoughts were I knew it was going to be difficult US Women's Open they're not going to set it up that easy um, and the most difficult thing out there was um, just staying focused keeping with it you know not getting ahead of myself um, you know playing until the very end and um, you know just even when I went one under through nine I, my plan was to keep going you know don't don't be happy at one under keep trying to make more birdies and um yeah keep with it and luckily for me today you know kind of all fell into place thank you for your time thank you